I am hereby standing to deliver a lecture on the topic itself that is iontophoresis. So first of all let us know what is iontophoresis. So basically iontophoresis means ion transfer, ion transfer. So iontho means ion and phoresis means transfer. So introduction of ions into the body through means of direct continuous galvanic current is known as iontophoresis. Okay. Now iontophoresis basically we know that it is specialized technique used for stimulating different types of conditions. So hereby in this we are using electrical polarity. The mode is electrical polarity which is to be delivered beneath the electrodes into the skin or the tissues through means of direct current that is called as galvanic current. Okay. Now we have five basic principles of iontophoresis. Five basic principles of iontophoresis. Now what are those five basic principles? Number one we have current required. Now current required is basically for the treatment to be done or the iron which are needed to be transferred into the tissues we need certain sort of current. So that certain sort of current is known as direct current or you can call it as galvanic, galvanic current. Okay. Next, we are preferring constant current over constant voltage. Constant current over constant voltage. Now this was the first basic principle of iontophoresis that we require a sort of current that is called direct current or galvanic current to produce a iontophoresis uh, effect. Now next what we have is low amplitude. Second basic principle is low amplitude. So for low amplitude it should be effective in nature. Number one it should be effective and it should be less effective. Okay. Next what we have is which comes under low amplitude is that the treatment time treatment time should be at least 20 to 30 minutes. 20 to 30 minutes. And the concentration, the ionic concentration which we are using, ionic concentration should be less than 5%. Less than 5%. So this was the second basic principle of iontophoresis. Third we have ionic polarity. Ionic polarity. So this plays a major role in iontophoresis. If we do not consider ionic polarity, we cannot go for further iontophoresis. So for ionic polarity, we should always go on to a principle that we have in mind like when we uh, you know talk about magnetism. So magnetism what we consider is ki like pole will repel and unlike sorry like pole will uh, uh, like pole will repel and unlike pole will attract. So similarly same pattern we will be using here for ionic polarity that is like poles will repel unlike poles will attract. Okay. 
so the principle remains same for ionophoresis as well as for magnetism so basically we are introducing ions into the body so what we should be using for mandatory for this ionophoresis is the ions so now the ions in which we are introducing the pole the electrode on which we are introducing the ions are always known as active electrodes active electrodes so this was the third basic principle of ionophoresis now fourth I, fourth basic principle says electrode size electrode size electrode should always for if we are talking about negative electrode it should always be the double the size double the size of the positive one positive one so negative one should always be larger why why it is larger so that whenever we are using current density whenever we are using current density current density will automatically be get minimized if this current density will get minimized naturally what will happen the current which was showing irritation on delivering will uh, you know be in less and it will be less reactive so that is why the negative pole or electrode should always be made larger so that it can counteract the irritant which is acting due to current density or while we are increasing current okay so this was the four basic principle of ionophoresis next we will be talking about the selective ions which are used for delivering in certain sort of conditions what are those conditions let's see and what are those ions let us know so selection of appropriate ions appropriate ions so what are those ions number 1 let us look for the condition first we have inflammatory condition inflammatory condition so for catering inflammatory condition we have sort of different ions the one which are used for in this process are number 1 dexamethasone dexamethasone number 2 we have hydrocortisone hydrocortisone so these are the two basic ions that we use to relieve inflammatory conditions next we have spasm for spasm we use calcium as well as magnesium next condition we have analgesic analgesic in this the ions which we are using is lidocaine lidocaine and magnesium next condition we have edema for edema we are using micoil micoil and salicylate and salicylate so these are the two group of ions that we will be using for the condition edema okay next we have okay next we have a condition which is known as hyperhidrosis hyperhidrosis and for this we use an ion that is glyco pyronium bromide as well as we use tap water okay next we have a condition known as scar tissue scar for this we are using chlorine as well as iodine so these are the basic selective conditions in which we see a need for using ionophoresis as a technique for stimulating 
certain sort of conditions how by using power of ions that we deliver into tissues or skin with the help of electrode placed over the skin and the current which we are using here is direct current that we also called it as galvanic current in nature okay so this we have completed the selection of appropriate ions that we are going to use for different and several various conditions okay now let us switch on to what are the you know indications so what are the indications for ionophoresis indications means basically uses so what are the indications number 1 to relieve pain local anesthesia while if we wanted to introduce a local anesthesia into certain region or a part so we can always go for ionophoresis next is basic musculoskeletal skeletal conditions basic musculoskeletal conditions will be comprising of all the conditions which are generated due to muscle uh, ligaments tendons or connective tissues next we have tension oblique headache we can always go for ionophoresis if condition prevails like this tension or headache headache okay next there are also various type of uses that we can use ionophoresis is as next is inflammatory condition next spasm edema etc so these are the basic condition here by which we can use ionophoresis to relieve them next let us look for what are the complications complications of ionophoresis so complications if we talk about complications there are three types of complications number 1 chemical burn chemical burn chemical burn is a type of condition in which excessive amount of sodium hydroxide get deposited or accumulated over the cathode pole so sodium hydroxide deposition over कैथोड इलेक्ट्रोड सो आफ्टर द बर्न विच वी आर गेटिंग फ्रॉम सोडियम हाइड्रोक्साइड द स्किन विल शो शो पिंकिश ग्रेइश डिसकलरेशन डिसकलरेशन एंड लेटर ऑन and later on will ooze a wa a wound okay so if we talk about sodium hydroxide accumulation after sodium hydroxide accumulation the skin will show a pinkish grayish discoloration and later on it will ooze a wound so that wound can be treated now treatment that wound can be treated through antibiotics through antibiotics or one can also go for sterile solutions now this here we have talked about cathode electrode now what about anode anode the burn is rare and if it happens it will usually cause the skin to get red hard and will lead to a scab so here what we were getting a wound and here we are getting a scab although over anode this is rare leaf found 
now we have talked about complication in this first we have talked about chemical burn next we have heat burn heat burn so heat burn is basically caused due to accumulation of excessive heat or generation of excessive current under acting your active electrode so accumulation of accumulation accumulation of ions of same polarity or increase in current density now how it is usually acting first due to the electrodes now how come electrodes are involved so basically electrode if the size is too small number 1 if the size is too small it will again cause to lead of heat burn number 2 if electrode is not positioned properly not positioned properly this can also leads to burn now what is the third form third form is when the skin over which the electrode is placed is placed is not moistened is not moistened okay so these are the three factors which leads to heat burn now let's talk about the third part in complication that is ionic polarity that is ionic polarity that is ionic polarity so it is always advised that same ions having same polarity two ions having same polarity cannot be used cannot be used over an active electrode so this was the third basic complications of ionophoresis next we'll be talking about electrodes now electrodes are divided into two types two categories number 1 the traditional ones number 2 the commercial ones traditional ones are always made up of lead lead copper and magnesium ones are uh, much smaller than the traditional ones as well as they have a space where a ch- uh, that is to be called as a chamber in which you can inject ionic solution into that okay and for the commercial one they get easily adhered to your skin so these are basically those electrodes which you will get whenever you are going for an ionophoresis technique so these are always sold with ionophoresis okay now we were talking about traditional electrodes traditional are mainly made up of lead copper aluminium and magnesium they have larger sizes larger size comparatively commercial ones are smaller in size next in this what we do we soak a sponge or gauze piece into ionic solution and that has to be you know wrapped around the electrode basically here what happens here we are using electrode that itself contains a space and in which we inject an ionic solution to it okay the chamber is basically made up of semi membrane okay 
now this was traditional and this was commercial okay so nowadays which the brand we are using is commercial one for using the technique antiphorosis okay now what are the preparatory steps that need to be taken while following antiphorosis now what are those steps number 1 the skin should be properly assessed why it is need to be assessed for cuts bruises and it should be free from all sort of resistance next the skin or tissue which is to be treated must be washed properly must be washed properly now why washing is made mandatory so that the skin could be free from grease oil or germs next what we do after first we assess the skin then we um, make it as a habit or mandatory to the uh, for that skin part to be get washed next what we see is ki whether there is no such abnormality melty of sensory loss so what we look after the skin should be washed is the skin that has to be you know treated with antiphorosis should be you know the sensation must be intact it should not be abnormality there should no, not be any abnormality of sensory loss so sensation should need to be intact properly next what we focus is the positions the position of electrode the position of electrode so basically if the electrode is to be placed right so the deposition or the transfer of ions into the skin will be much easier faster and effective okay so this was basically the position of the electrode next what you have to uh, tell patient or you have to ask or inquire patient about whether he or she doesn't have any you know tree he or she does not have any reaction towards several metals like copper magnesium sodium chlorine or iodine etc next the electrode should be placed properly and proper position positioning of the patient is made mandatory next you will ask or tell patient whether he or she is feeling okay he or she is able to bear whatever the current density you are passing into that antiphorosis next after placement and after positioning you will you know see to that if you are using traditional again we are going back on traditional electrodes if you are using traditional electrode you will tell patient that an amount of soaked ionic solution into that material that we are using over on top of this electrode that is gauze piece or any sort of sponge should be you know properly into that solution ionic solution and should be wrapped over the electrode for proper delivering of the drugs into the body or tissue as we are using commercial ones there we already have a certain sort of chamber 
which in which we have already filled with ionic solution and we don't need to uh, you know get it soaked before prior hand so there we have a certain sort of you know uh, advancement over those techniques okay next these were the preparatory steps that we were taking while we are addressing a patient so here we have finished over our uh, lecture on the topic that is called ionophoresis and thank you